Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch. In this special episode, we look at the anniversary of the coup against Salvador Allende in Chile and the continuing efforts to obtain justice for the victims of the decades-long military dictatorship. This year marked the 46th anniversary of the US-backed coup against Chile's socialist president Allende. On September 11, 1973, the armed forces of Chile occupied the capital city of Santiago and surrounded the presidential headquarters and began to attack it with tanks and bombed it with British Hawker Hunter jets. When a contingent of soldiers went to knock down the doors of the presidential palace, Salvador Allende supposedly surrendered and committed suicide, though the full truth of what happened is still unknown. Salvador Allende was one of the first Marxist presidents elected by popular vote and in his less than three years in office, carried forward important socialist policies to better the lives of Chileans. These include the nationalization of copper mining, the nationalization of banks, agrarian reforms, and health, education, and social reforms. The coup to take down Allende was orchestrated by the United States government as part of its Operation Condor to combat leftist and Marxist political projects in Latin America. Following the coup, the civic military dictatorship led by Augusto Pinochet was installed in Chile, which lasted nearly 16 and a half years. The dictatorship in Chile was characterized by systematic violation of human rights, annihilation of the political opposition, and the limiting of basic freedoms. Santiago's National Stadium was the largest detention center. Around 30,000 members of the Popular Unity, the left-wing alliance behind Allende's candidacy, were detained, tortured, and over 3,000 were disappeared and assassinated. Before his death on September 11, 1973, Salvador Allende released one last radio broadcast. With the city under siege by the armed forces and knowing that his own end was near, he spoke these stirring final words to his people. Trabajadores de mi patria, tengo fe en Chile su destino. Llegan ustedes sabiendo que mucho más temprano que tarde, de nuevo abrirán las grandes alamedas por donde pase el hombre libre para construir una sociedad mejor. Viva Chile, viva el pueblo, vivan los trabajadores. The dictatorship of Pinochet finally ended in 1990 although he stayed commander-in-chief of the army till 1998. The years following Pinochet's stepping down were marked by a sustained campaign to ensure justice for the victims of the dictatorship. Pinochet was arrested, released and then placed in house arrest before he died in 2006. At the time of his death, he faced around 300 charges of human rights violations. The people of Chile have not forgotten or forgiven the crimes of Pinochet, his cronies and the United States which backed him. Every year, Protests are held around the anniversary of the coup, demanding justice for the victims and stressing the importance of eternal vision. On September 8th in Santiago, over 10,000 Chileans took part in the march against denial and impunity to pay tribute and demand justice for the victims. The relatives and friends of the victims, as well as members of social and human rights organizations and left-wing political parties, peacefully marched to the general cemetery. However, just before reaching the cemetery, the officials of the National Police Force began repressing the protesters. The police used tear gas and water jets against the protesters. In addition, at least a dozen people were arrested. The police attitude this year was much harsher in preventing these tributes. It seems that the right-wing government of Sebastian Piñera is upset and annoyed at the reminder that there was state terrorism here for 17 years and that they were complicit, said Alicia Lira the president of the Association of Relatives of Executed Political Prisoners, one of the organizers of the march. Another key organizer said, We march with the conviction that in Chile, there is no truth or full justice. This was Marcos Barraza, member of the Communist Party of Chile. The march was called for by a number of groups, such as the National Coordinator of Human Rights Organizations, the Association of Relatives of Disappeared Detainees, the Association of Relatives of Executed Political Prisoners, the Chilean Commission on Human Rights and the Communist Party of Chile, among others. Every year in September, these organizations conduct the march before the anniversary of the coup. On September 11th, a group of women dressed in black demonstrated in Santiago at the old torture center of Pinochet's dictatorship to remember the human rights violations that were committed there. However, yet again, they were repressed by the national police. The police once again arrested a number of protesters. Protest mobilizations were carried out near the National Stadium too, which was the largest detention center during Pinochet's dictatorship. The protesters 
commemorated victims of the dictatorship by lighting candles and singing folk songs. Speeches made by Allende were also projected on the stadium facade. 46 years after the coup, the brave people of Chile are an inspiration to us all. We remember Allende. We remember Victor Jara, who sang of resistance till the moment of his brutal murder. We remember those who died, tortured and were disappeared. And we remember those who fought and continue to fight on. Down in Santiago, Chile, there was a great young songwriter, 37 years old, Victor Jara was his name, very popular there. And when the generals took over, he was arrested, he was tortured, took him to the soccer stadium, and there he started singing to keep up the spirits of the other prisoners. The guards told him to stop, and he didn't stop, so they whammed down with his rifle butts. They crushed his arms, broke them both at the wrists. And then they later beat him over the head and shot him. But Victor Jara, he wrote a lot of songs. They're all through, uh, not only Chile, but the rest of Latin America. They don't get sung out in the open now. They don't get, but uh, the song's getting around. I wish I knew one of them to sing for you. I can't sing Spanish that well, but I, just this afternoon, I got the translation of the last poem he wrote. He was actually, it was, it was the morning of the day that he was shot, and he wrote this verse on a small scrap of paper, and somehow it was smuggled out. Uh, we are 5,000 here in this little part of the sky. We are 5,000, how many more shall we be? In the whole city, in the whole country, 10,000 hands which can seed the fields, make run the factories, how much humanity with hunger now, cold, panic, pain and terror. Six of us are now lost in space among the stars, one dead, one beaten, like I never knew a human being could be beaten. The other four wanting to die, wanting to leave all the terror, beating their heads against the wall. The military carry out their plans with precision. The blood is like medals for them. Slaughter is the badge of their heroism. Is this the world you created, oh my God, in seven days? The blood of Compañero Presidente is stronger than bombs. Oh, you song, you come out so badly when I must sing the terror what I see, I never saw. What I have felt, what I feel. Hai canto, que mal me sales. Hai canto, que mal me sales.